Hello, hello everyone. Hope everybody's having a good night tonight. Let me get my computer going here and we'll get going with some fun painting. get my computer going here. I'll be rolling here in just a minute. All right, everybody, are y'all excited about this one? This is going to be such a fun project. Um, this is design two of the March Easy Dot Art Box. So I've got a color variation tonight and a design variation. So I hope um, you all are excited about seeing the colors because I put out the, the uh, opportunity to vote. And you can probably tell the spring rainbow won that vote count. So I'm excited to bring this to you. I've got definitely a different design. So if you have been following along this week, we did this design on Monday. And same template. So we've got this template. And uh, tonight I'm going to show you how to do a totally different design on the same template. So that is the fun thing about these templates that I've got in the Easy Dot Art Box. Um, lots of different things that you can do with these. So if you're jumping on, say hi. I'm having a little bit of a um, computer snafu here. Um, but I may not be able to see your comments right away. I'm just waiting on my computer to um, decide that it actually wants to show me the live. So if it takes me a minute to jump on here with you, I apologize while I mess around with this. All right. Hold on one second. Hang tight with me. See if I can get it to do. There we go. There we go. Now I can see you guys. Hi, hi. How's everybody doing tonight? If you're jumping on, make sure you say hi so I know that you're here. I know a couple people are here. I already see a heart there, so thank you so much for the heart. Um, let me get a link up here for you. And my computer seems to be running really slow tonight. Okay, so while that's deciding what it's going to do, um, we're going to do this design tonight. So we've got, as you can see, a lot of walking of the dots here. So that is something that um, people always want to see, and they want to learn how to do that. So we definitely will have the opportunity to do that tonight. This is our template that we're working with here. We've got our design lines all ready to go here on the template. They are sketched, uh, laser etched right into the template here, so it makes it easy as can be. You don't have to worry about finding your center because your center is laser etched in there, and it's all ready to go for you. Now tonight, I've got my background painted black here. 99.9% um, .9 of the time, I do paint my background black, so you will see that for the majority of what I do. Um, hold on here. Let me get this link going for you here. I hope everybody's having a good night tonight. I think we got, um, some rain coming, so, um, batting down the hatches, right? Everybody needs to have their umbrellas and all that fun stuff for tomorrow. At least it's not sh uh, snow shovels tomorrow, though, right? Okay, I about got you here. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's get going. 
There, finally got everything up and rolling. Okay, let's get going with this. I've got um, this design we're going to do. Now, I'm going to do a little bit different order on what I did on my sample. On the sample one, I started with orange. So I'm going to start with pink this time in the center. So I actually am using my uh, Pittsburgh Punch Set to do my dotting with tonight. And I have a punch already laid out that will fit perfectly in that center dot. So the nice thing about this is um, with this center all ready to go for us, I don't have to worry about being in the center and I just know I need something that is just a little bit smaller than that center dot. We're going to start with the pink here and we'll get that foundation dot laid down there um, ready to go. So always that first dot is always the most important one because that really gets your center all lined up there for you. Now on this we've got two tiny little rings here so we're going to go ahead and fill those in and I am going to do a full fill on those so um, we have got our um, I've got my nail dot tools that I'm going to use here and I'm going to go ahead on out to my orange color so my pink was pink tropics deco art Americana multi-surface satin and that is what I'm using for everything tonight now I am um, going to do just like the clock here. So I have 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And then I am going right in the center of each of those. And then I'll go on the edge of each of those. And that really just helps keep that lined up for me. So I try to keep my dots pretty even. Now I'll just fill in between. And that's going to give us 12 dots total all the way around this circle. And it is just a full second circle of dots. And I am using one of my smaller nail art uh, dotting tools here for this one. And I've got that full circle there ready to go. I like that look with the circle there all full of dots. Now if you've got any questions please let me know. I'm moving on out to canary yellow and basically what I'm going to do here is I am just going to place right at the um, oh it's like I'm nesting that dot within the, the previous two dots. I'm keeping the same size and I am just lining those up right between uh, the last two in the last row. So it gives an offset dot for each of these. And it just gives a little bit more space here on the next row out simply because we are uh, a little bit farther out. This ring is a little bit wider. So this is template number two for the March uh, Easy Dot Art box. So um, next week I'll be showcasing template number three. And I'm just checking my size here on this. And I'm going to go ahead and go on out with the uh, green is going to be our next color. Now I've got petals here that I'm working on. So this next color is going to go right at the base of those petals and this is apple green and it's just going to go right at the base of each one of these petals. Then we're going to do a little dotting around that color. So I wanted to do this design with a lot of walking of the dots. Um, people um, request those quite often. They want to see how that's done. So this is the perfect design for that because the base design is really um, set up to be able to walk the dots. So that's one of the neat things about these templates. There are so many different things that can be done with them that um, they're a lot of fun because they're so versatile. Now I'm going to go ahead and go on up to the blue. I'm using Blue Lagoon today and I am placing a dot here at the top of each one 
and this is with a little bit larger nail dotting tool here and then I'll come back in and walk the dots down around here with just the um, smaller end. I'm just filling up this top portion of this petal with this blue and then I'll come back in and I'll walk down on each side to fill in that blue area. If you're just jumping on, make sure you say hi so I know that you're here. So I'm going to take the smaller end and I am just going to walk this dot down here till I get to the, the little crease in my design. And for me on this, it's just four dots. And we'll just go four down on each side. And it really just depends on how widespread those dots are. It may be less if you were doing this. Um, for me, I've got them hugged up here pretty close. I try to get those dots as close as possible without uh, touching them together. So I've got four. So walking the dots basically means you dip the paint, dip in the paint one time, and then you, um, I always say dot, dot, dot. Oops, I missed a side there. So you just dot, dot, dot without reloading your paintbrush. So that's what walking the dots is. And so when you do that, you offload your paint each time and the dots get smaller and smaller. So that's what walking the dots is. Okay. So we've about got our first section of walk dots done here. If you're just joining me and you didn't get to see what I did there, have no fear. We've got lots of dot walking to do tonight. And then I'm going to come back in with my smallest Pittsburgh punch tool. And I'm just going to dot at the base of those where I walked them down. And it's just going to give us a little foundation dot there. Same color. I just want to give a dot at the end of that walked row. And it's kind of just tying all those together. So this was the People's Choice of Colors, the Spring Rainbow. So I love this because it always looks so bright and cheery. Um, hey, Shelly. Good evening. Hey, Kim. Good evening. Good to see you. I know. Isn't walking the dots fun? I love it, too. Okay, so there is the basis of our little design. We're going to move on out here. Now, I'm going to start back over at the beginning of our colors again. So remember, Pink Tropics, Pumpkin Patch, Canary, Apple Green, and Blue Lagoon. And at the end, I will be adding in some Turf Green as well. And I'm just going to check a size here on this. I'm going to go ahead and go on in with my pink. And I'm just going to lay a base dot here for... Um, a foundation for some more walked dots. So I like to do a nice foundation dot and then um, everything that we do with the walked dots will hug around this foundation dot. Okay, now we're going to come back in with that small Pittsburgh punch tool and we're going to go up a color and we're just going to lay our top foundation here this is going to be end up being such a bright colorful piece here I love having the, the rainbow colors they're always so cheery now this is just a little bit of a different variation because it is more of a, a pastel spring color set. So now I'm going to come back in with just a smaller nail dotting tool, uh, nothing too big, and we're just going to walk the dots down on each side. So I'm dipping my paint and dot, dot, dot. Now I will tell you, it's funny, um, a lot of times... And I think it's because I I kind of look around to the left. I seem to have more room on the right side than the left side. 
so I don't always put the same amount of dots on one side as I do on the other. So if you count my dots as I'm working, you'll see that a lot of times that um, as I'm looking at it, the left side, a lot of times we'll have less dots. It's not a big deal. By the time you get all the dots on here, people will never realize that you didn't get the same amount, like for instance there. Um, and it's just, I think when I look at, uh, when I'm laying that base dot and I look at it from my perspective, it seems straight, but it's a little bit off. So it's just one of those things on my pieces that you'll see. I don't worry about it. Okay, moving on up. If you're just joining us, make sure you say hi so I know that you're here. We're going to move on up to the yellow. This is our canary yellow. And again, I'm using the Americana Multi-Surface Satin. I like this paint because it gives a nice um, satiny, glossy look to the piece. And I am using the smallest of my Pittsburgh Punch tools here just to lay my foundation dot at the top of each petal here. And I'm going to go back with the same size nail dotting tool and we're just going to walk, walk, walk down. So this piece here gives you a ton of practice on walking dots. Uh, this is actually the reason I fell in love with dot painting was the look of the walked dots. Um, every time I saw that, I felt like it looked like um, lace. And I always thought it looked so dainty and pretty that I wanted to learn how to do that. So that was one of the reasons I even started dot painting was the walked dots. Now I'm hugging these up to the previous one as close as I can get them without touching. Okay. Oh, hey Susie. Hi from Colorado. How are you tonight? Thanks for stopping by. I'm glad you're here. Okay, now we will go in with, I've got to, to the point here where I'm just about at the top of this peak. So I'm going in with just a, a ball daughter here to fit in my next row, which is the green. I don't quite have enough room to fit in the small Pittsburgh punch tool. So I wanna get another row in there because there is enough room for another row but not quite enough room for that larger um, tool. So we're going in with a smaller tool and just fitting our little beginning dot in here. And then it will be small little dots going down around. Just what we can fit in here in this design. And then I'm gonna move down in size then on the walked dots because I have less space to fit in here. So these are just little micro dots. And then the next row out is actually the little frame around the petal. So we will be doing tiny little micro dots on that. We will put a base dot at the top again. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. It's 
So this is design number three of the March Easy Dot Art subscription box. The link to the information on the box is at the top of the comments. If you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, so I've got this really small little nail dot tool that I'm fitting these tiniest of little dots around that last row. They're just fitting in on that in the template. So I just finished up this petal here and I'm going to go in and do the little uh, petal outline. So again, I'm going to just use my small tool and I'm going in with the blue which is our next color out and I'm just going to put my foundation dot at the top now this is a small little area so I don't like to go over the design line so I try to keep it as uh, tiny as possible So on this, most likely, I will just walk it down as far as it'll go before I run out of paint. Um, I may go back in. We'll see how it looks. <laughs> Jamie, yes! The color explosion! <laughs> yes! Okay, so we're really going down in size. This is my smallest nail, nail art, nail dotting tool. And we are just going to walk down here as far as I can and it, and it really is going all the way to the bottom on this one yes the spring color explosion we had four options on this and this ended up being the uh, people's choice so it's a fun color combo so it's um I had a little stringy something there on my tool. So I cleaned off and I'm starting over here. So we'll go all the way around on this side and then we'll come back and go down the other way. So if you sign up for the subscription box, yes, as long as you order before, <clears throat> excuse me, as long as you order before February 25th, you will receive the March subscription box, which will have this design in it. That's a great question, Susie. Thank you. So as long as you order before the 25th, you'll get the current month that I'm showing. So this is um, one of three designs that will come in the March box. And you also get a private Facebook group with that, Susie, and uh, we have all the instruction in there where I do um, even different designs than what I showed on the live. So um, I always do a different design for um, the people in the Easy Dot Art headquarters, and that way they're getting their own designs. So, and it's three different designs every month, shipped out uh, on or around the 1st, depending on if there's a, a weekend or a holiday. And shipping is included in that for people who are in the continental United States. Okay. All right. So there is our first set of walk dots. Is that not, a, doesn't that look awesome? I love those colors. Okay. So we're moving on out. Let me get a drink here. We're moving on out here, and we're going to do the same colors all over again. I'm going to grab my largest uh, tool that I have out here. Um, we're going to start again with the pink right down in the base. And I've got just a little bit larger dot here this time. Um, there's more space to fill up there. 
So this is just my foundation dot to take all of my walked dots around. And we will end up, or should end up, with outlining with the pink on this one um, because there's actually enough room to do all of the colors um, with the walk dots. So we should end up with the pink being our final outline on this. Okay, so there is our foundation dot. Now I'm going to go back in with my smallest uh, Pittsburgh punch tool, my red one. And we'll work our way out again. I'm going to start with the orange. And we'll put that right at the top. So it's the foundation of the first line. Now there's a couple different ways you could do this. You can do a foundation dot with your walking tool. Um, I prefer to do this to where I put my foundation and have all consistent sizes there. And then I go back in with, I like to do walking of the dots with a ball tool. So then I come back in um, with my ball dotting tool and uh, walk those dots down. So you can do it one way or the other. Um, both get the job done. And the other thing that I do when I walk the dots I make sure that I am hugging the walk dots around whatever it is that I'm walking them around. So if it's a, a dot or a design or whatever it is, wherever I'm walking those dots, I hug them up as close as I can so that um, they stay as even as possible as I'm walking them down. Okay, now I'll flip it around. And we'll go down the other way and see if I got it lined up there. I should be pretty good on this one because I nested that foundation dot right there in the design. And that's why these design lines are so great because they really help you stay where you need to. Keeps everything lined up so that you have a finished piece that... Um, uh, looks the same on one side as it does on the other. Okay, there we go. Oh, that's a great question, Susie. So, I am not a big fan of resin, um, but I do typically use triple thick spray. So, I'll use a triple thick, uh, Rust-Oleum triple thick uh, satin spray. I do like to have the glossy finish. A lot of people don't like the glossy. I do. Um... So I typically will spray mine. Now I have a backlog of a lot of them because I, I don't want to spray them inside. That's It's just really, um, the fumes are really bad with that. So I will use that. There's a lot of those uh, glossy type, uh, satin type sprays on the market. So I just prefer to use that. I have um, never done really well with resin. So I just use the spray. And it seems to do really well. And I like the look with that. So it works well for me. But I do like to have that uh, spray protectant on it just to protect the artwork. Um, a lot of my pieces kind of get carried around. They get schlepped around all over the place when I'm displaying my, my things. So I do like to use the um, protective spray on it just to um, keep the pieces from getting damaged. Now, if they were just hanging in my home, I would probably do the same thing um, because if they're hanging up, um, for me, they're much easier to clean if they've got the uh, glossy surface or the spray on them, if they get dusty or whatever from just hanging up. So I do like to put a, a coating on them. Okay, so on this second one, um, it's a little easier to see what I'm doing in this bigger petal because there's more room. The last set of petals were really small. I was doing a lot of little micro dotting. This one's easier to see. So um, you can see I'm just hugging right around where I was previously and just 
dotting or uh, dipping in my paint and walking down. And this petal is big enough, we'll be able to fit all the colors in. I went back on that one there. I didn't uh, touch it down far enough. A lot of times I am not even touching the surface of the piece. I'm just kind of kissing it with the paint. So um, I went back and redotted that one because I didn't quite go down far enough. Okay, we're moving on up. I'm still using my same uh, smallest Pittsburgh punch tool and laying that foundation dot. Next color up. Now, I think I'm going to get a little bit bigger. And I'm, I pulled out my, this is my Dollar Tree daughter. If you guys haven't been to the Dollar Tree, they've got a lot of stuff there. Um, including these little uh, ball daughters for a dollar. And it's got two different sizes on it. Great tool. Um, it's just a great overall easy tool to get. So if you've got a Dollar Tree close to you, I recommend you go check out their craft department. So they are $1.25 now. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but Dollar Tree is no longer a dollar. It's $1.25, which is still a pretty good deal, but it does add up. Isn't that beautiful with these colors? Love it. <laughs> Shelly, I know. The Dollar Tree Daughter is awesome because it's just the perfect size. You've got a small and a large. And um, so it fits a lot of areas. It's a it's an all-purpose all -purpose ball daughter. I love it. And uh, I, I use my nail art tools a lot, but this one is really a good go-to for me. Now, you can see how much paint I have on it, and uh, I haven't had it that long, so I use it a lot. Okay. All right, is this not looking beautiful? I love it. Okay, back to the smallest of the... Um, the smallest Pittsburgh punch tool, and we are going to be able to fit that pink row in there. So I'm really just continuing to hug these up as close as possible to the last row. That's always my goal, to get my dots as close as possible without touching. And um, for me, that's always the goal. <laughs> hey, Becca. Yeah, the dollar twenty-five tree. I'm not quite sure how that works, but yeah, they're. Um, I guess it's like everything else. The prices are going up, but yeah, the dollar twenty-five buck and a quarter, buck and a quarter tree. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, so we got our blue here. Same process. We're just going to go down here and fill it in. Walk these dots. Now on the next row, um, I've got the pink that we're going to just fit right in there. We're going to just nestle it right in, um, right between the edge of the design and the blue here. 
Uh, so I may have to go back down in size, so we'll see how we do after I get the blues in. And we'll head back down here. So if you guys want to check out the March box, the link is at the top of the comments. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. You're welcome to message me. If you have questions, I have um, lots of videos for you guys to check out. If you want to check out my YouTube channel, it is She Shed Arts Channel is what you'll want to look for. Um, if you just put in She Shed Arts, which is actually the name of my channel, you're going to get lots of directions on how to build a she shed. So put in she shed arts channel and you will find me on YouTube. And I've got, oh gosh, close to 50 videos on there now. So you can check that out. It's all about dot art, of course. Okay, we're going to move on to the pink. And we are fitting a pink dot in here. So speaking of the Buck and Aquata store, I had this um, Lazy Susan, and I hadn't used it for a long time because I didn't wasn't real sure that it was going to work real well with my little um, six-inch templates that I have uh, because they're smaller than the, uh, the Lazy Susan. So I got it back out, and I actually I painted it black because it was kind of jarring seeing all that white for me it was on the video. So I painted it black and then I put a piece of um, shelf liner around it and the shelf liner messed with the video. So sometimes the video has a hard time picking up what I'm doing simply because of all the dots. So it was, it was kind of competing with the dots and the netted shelf liner. So I went back to the buck and a quarter store and I got this little hot pad thing and uh, hopefully this is my first video using that so hopefully that will help. Ooh, I'm really squeezing them in here. And you probably notice a lot of times when I'm walking these dots, I stop talking. It helps me concentrate and keep them straighter if I count them for some odd reason. So you'll find that when I'm talking, my rows don't look as good as when I'm just quiet because I'm uh, counting. Okay. Does it show up really well? Okay, I tell you what, I have been um, experimenting over and over. I experiment with all my videos to see what looks good and what you guys can see because um, if you guys saw my lighting setup, you would you would laugh. I I have uh, Shelly who was on here. I don't know if Shelly's still on here. I think it was Shelly said it looked like I was gonna. Um, set my studio on fire because of all the lights but I tell you what you would be amazed at how many lights you have to have to make these um, pieces show up on video it's crazy and to make the colors look really good now on these first couple ones I'm going to go back and just grab my very smallest nail dotting tool and just finish those off. They got really faint. So I'm just taking my smallest tool and picking up at the end and just filling in a little bit more so it goes down more. Okay, there we go. 
So that is uh, the big portion of our flower done here. I do have the outline still to do, so we're going to end up with the orange here on that outline. Now, at the top here, I'll show you where I'm at. I'm working, getting ready to work on this outline portion. It's wider than the smaller one here, so I will be able to go in just with a small ball daughter and just put that foundation dot up at the top here. And that'll look really nice. And um, I want it to look really good because it's actually that portion of the design comes out in between these other pieces here. So I really want it to look nice on that edge there. And just place that nice little dot there so that it really shows up. Now I'll come back in. And I will just follow that down like I did on the other one. And I'll go as far down as I can until I run out. And if I need to, I'll come back and fill in. On this one, it's hard for me to really load up my dotting tool because I don't want to go over the design line here. I really want to make sure that I'm staying in the parameters of that design so it looks really nice. Okay, and go back down the other way here. may just let these fade off in the distance here. I kind of like that on that orange. Now, for those of you who are sticking around here, we got some swooshing coming up. Everybody ready for some swooshes? Does everybody know what swooshes are? Live action swooshing. Okay, there we go. We got those petals. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead. I have uh, some turf green that I'm going to add in because I want to do on this portion. It needs two different types of green. And it's actually um, what I like to think of this portion in the design. It's like a leaf section. Um, now, I have... Uh, this is my own DIY swoosh tool. So basically, people ask me about this all the time. It's a pencil and a ball earring stuck down in there. Great thing is, you can get different size earrings. a little pearl earring, a little fakey pearl earring. And you can get different sizes to do um, different size swooshes. So we're going to go in and we're going to lay our middle foundation swoosh here. And I'm basically just aiming towards the uh, little valley of our petals here. I'm starting at the outer portion of that circle and just aiming down in there. And I'm just putting a little bit of paint on there and I'm placing it and dragging it. Now, there are actual tools to be used for swooshing. But um, I find that I like my little DIY tools. They um, do really well. Now, I'm going to use the larger uh, Dollar Tree daughter here. And I'm going to bring in that darker green. I'm just going to go around one side and we'll come back and go around the other. And this gives a really good look of leaves behind the flower. Kind of look here.
So basically on this, when you, if you put your uh, first dot off to the side of the other without touching, you can pretty much get down there pretty close and drag it down in there and the paint will stay right there with your tool and you can get it down in there without touching it. So that is my favorite way to do swooshes. Now you can use the other ball tools that um, you see on Amazon and Wish and all that. There's actually clay working tools that people have adopted for dot art to do this type of thing. Um, the reason I made my own, I actually, for those of you who have not heard the story, if you've heard it, I apologize. Um, I bought the ball daughter tools on Amazon and it was right when all the shipping issues were starting last year and it was taking forever and I really wanted to work on my swooshes so I said well I'm going to figure out how to make this tool myself and so I made my DIY swoosh tools and they have been my favorite tools ever since. I like them much more than the ones that I purchased and uh, so I use them all the time. Okay, look at how that looks. Isn't that pretty? Now, I'm going to go back in with just one of my smaller um, just my smaller um, Pittsburgh Punch tools and I want to go back in with the darker green and I'm just going to put a base dot over the end of the little leaves here coming out. It kind of gives those leaves something to anchor in. And I'm just placing that dot right over the top of the, the base. And a lot of times those little swoosh dots will end up uneven down there. So this is kind of nice because it kind of gives a little foundation there and finishes them off, makes them look real nice. I don't always do that, but um, I do think it looks nice. Okay. Oh, thank you, Kim. It is a happy group of colors, isn't it? I love it. This is really one of my favorite color palettes. Okay, now we're just going to finish it off by um, framing the outside edge here and really bringing out uh, these final colors. So I want to start just with the pink, and I'm going to just measure. I think I know what I've got here. I want to just bring that pink from the center and bring it out to the edge just to kind of finish that off. And I'm just going to place that right at the top of each one of these larger outer petals. And it's just going to give a final punch of that color right out here on the outside edge. And I think it'll really just finish our piece off here. For me, the biggest thing that I like, oh, thank you, LaDonna. Thank you so much. I'm glad you stopped by. Um, for me, uh, and I don't know how everybody else likes to do it, but I like to um, make sure that the, I'm going to go ahead and go around on one side. It's just easier. I like to make sure that the color goes throughout the painting um, to make sure whatever is on the inside kind of goes throughout and comes all the way to the outside. I just, that's me personally, it's just a personal choice. So a lot of times what I have on the inner circle will be what I do close to the outside because I like that flow through of color. And that's just a personal choice. By no means do you have to do yours like that. Everybody can do, you know, whatever color choices you want. You can do whatever design you want. And that's the beauty of these templates. Um, they offer such variety. Yes, the colors balance. And that's why I like that. That's why I, um, it's really my favorite way to do things because I do like that balance. 
Okay, we're finishing off with this beautiful yellow here. went back over where I was. Cleaned my tool off here. I accidentally dipped in the green. So I'm ending up here with the yellow and the only thing I don't have represented here is the blue. So I may go ahead and put a little blue dot here between the yellow and green. I think that'll look nice and then that'll give us that uh, representation of the blue on the outer because we've got our our leaves here with the green so we don't really need any more green so I'm just going to check the size here I think we can either that or I may get yeah we'll do just the small little Pittsburgh punch tool and just finish that off and that gives us all of our colors here right along the outside once we look at the leaves and the colors here on the point now um, that being said you can always go back once it's dry you can go back and put top dots on these larger dots and really represent all the colors so you know that's always an option which I absolutely love top dots I uh, probably would not go back and try to top dot any of those little walk dots, but the uh, larger dots here, here, those are all open game for top dotting. And um, for those of you who don't know what top dotting is, it's where once you get one set of dots down and they're nice and dry, you can come back in with a smaller dot right on top. And for me, I always call it, it's like the jewelry on your outfit. It just finishes up um, the piece because it just puts that extra detail in there. Okay, you guys. Oh my gosh, was this not so much fun? Look at all those walk dots. Is that not fun? All right, so I'm so glad that everybody came by tonight. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to let me know. Um, as I said before, this is design number two of the March Easy Dot Art Box. The link is in the top of the comments. If you order before February 25th, you will receive this design in your box. And you'll also be in the private Facebook group where we learn how to do all these wonderful things. So if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. And oh, hi, Joanne. Is it Joanne or Joan? I'm sorry if I said it wrong. Hello, hello. Glad you're here. Um, so, sprinkled. Oh, thank you so much, LaDonna. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, thank you so much for stopping by. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll look forward to seeing you guys again. I'll be live again next Monday and Wednesday for design number three of the March Box. So, you guys have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.